You may or may not be familiar with the Bank for International Settlements, but if you look them up, you're going to find that they are the central bank's central bank. And that means that they are the regulatory body for every major bank in the world. So as we move closer and closer to the global economic reset, this is one of the key entities to be paying attention to. In this video, I'm going to show you the proposed implementation of Basel III, the end of this month, which is a law or rules that if implemented, would be the death of the paper metals market. The LBMA, the COMEX, well, they run roughly 10 trillion in gold and silver derivative contracts a year, like ETFs, spot gold futures, swaps, etc. This could be an extreme catalyst for real physical gold and silver to explode. And this is what we are going to explore coming up. Hey. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer. And, and I'm telling you, I have been groomed for this moment in time. I'm getting chills. I'm really happy to be here today. So we're going to be looking at the potential death of the metals market because you have to understand that implementing Basel III has been postponed and postponed and postponed. Now, part of it is possibly going to be implemented the end of this month. And it asks the question, will that implementation of this part of Basel III boost gold and silver prices? The current schedule for full implementation, well, right now it's the banks in continental Europe that this part, that, and we're just going to focus on the gold and silver part for today but uh, that would be implemented in continental Europe. Lest you not think that that would impact us here, you know that the entire global banking system is incestuously interconnected. So it does not really matter where it happens, it's coming home. Uh, British banks are supposed to begin the implementation in, in January 22, and all changes are supposed to become effective in, oh, what year is that? Oh, yeah, 2023. Now, what else is happening in 2023? Well, we've talked about the LIBOR and the, and the need to restructure all of the contracts that mature after that certain date. Well, that's been postponed until 2023. Anything else? Oh yeah, the Fed anticipates having the digital dollar ready by 2023. So that seems like that's gonna be a pretty big year. But will they start to bring in the implementation now? We'll find out. What you need to know is the LBMA is the largest gold and silver trading platform in the world, trading, you know, roughly $5 trillion annually, not in physical because there's not that much physical out there, but in contracts, derivatives, which are just a bet. You cannot convert a derivative contract into the underlying asset. The COMEX here in the U.S. is the second largest gold and silver trading platform. Virtually all of this trading is in the form of unallocated precious metals, which means you might own them and they might be holding them, but they're not held specifically in your name. That means that they're really using the fractional reserve system. Oh, I have this one ounce of gold. I think I will trade, I don't know, a hundred, a thousand, 62,000 gold contracts against this one ounce of physical. 
I'm going to read this whole piece, and I'm, I'm going to also encourage you to go in and follow all of the, all of the links uh, in the blog. But how huge is this paper market where banks may hold paper contracts to cover their liabilities to deliver physical precious metals? In a Commodity Futures Trading Commission hearing in March 2010, precious metals consultant, blah, 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 that these institutions may have sold their physical metals as much as a hundred times the quantity of metal that they actually owned. Obviously, if all these owners contacted their bank to take delivery, the paper market would crash. Okay, now he's saying a hundred times, I personally saw with my own eyes, unfortunately, before I knew about print screen, that according to the Bank for International Settlements, for every one physical ounce of gold that exists, there were 62,000 derivative contracts. That's why you kind of see me hesitating. Look, you know, the bottom line in this, and I'll, I'll go through everything, do I think that it's actually gonna be implemented on June 28th of this year? I, you know, I don't really think so, but I got to tell you, I could certainly be wrong. This is not something, it, it, look, if it was in my control, it would have been gone a long time ago. But I was surprised when they allowed Lehman to go out too. So I can't say for sure, but we're going to know in a few weeks whether or not this is actually going to be implemented. Even if it was only a hundred times, yeah it could certainly crash the metals market. Now, these are the monthly ounces in gold derivative trading just since December 2019 through May of 2020. So in terms of ounces, you know, it's a substantial amount, obviously, and it doesn't exist, it's just paper gold. It's easy to create as much gold, that's a push of a button. And it's cheap. It's very cheap. It'll cost you, what, 150 bucks to control 500 ounces of physical gold? That's dirt cheap. This, you've seen this before. These are, in the FDIC, insured banks, the precious metals, notional derivative trading, and how much that's grown. And this is through the, the uh, first quarter of 2021. So does it make it easy to suppress the price? Plus, how many of you have asked yourself if there's such a shortage, especially in silver, but in physical gold and silver, how come the prices remain this low? This is why. It's easy to do if you get to be close to those that write the rules and we'll see if they're actually going to change them because this is from the Bank of England, the SACCR framework, so this is central county party risk, all of that, applies to over-the-counter, so OTC derivatives, exchange-traded derivatives like GLD, SLV, and long settlement transactions. Long settlement means that the settlement goes out years, okay? And it scared the LBMA, the LPMCL, which I'll explain in a minute, and the World Gold Council so much that they wrote a letter to the financial authority in England and what they, and, but I want you to know who these guys are. They represent the global OTC market, which is going to be impacted by this. Participants in these markets include central banks, mining companies, precious metals producers, bullion banks, refiners, and fabricators. And then the London Precious Metals Clearing Limited, so this is the central clearing house, uh, was created by the LBMA members. And who would be the, oh, that's four of the bullion banks, HSBC. ICBC Standard Bank, JP Morgan, and UBS. So these are the guys that work in this area. We know this. And the default settlement location for most global OTC spot gold and silver transactions is London. OK? 
Okay, so it matters a lot. They use the unallocated account. In other words, you buy some gold, you're having them store it for you, but it's in a general account, which is a lot cheaper, right? A lot cheaper. And so that gives them the right to actually use it for their benefit. Now, the World Gold Council is the market development organization for the gold industry, and they help create lots of gold products. So this is really going to matter to them because these are the guys that create, trade, and control the precious metals market. And why all of us have been so, well, I personally haven't really been frustrated because it just gives, I look at it like this gives me the opportunity to continue to, to accumulate at bargain basement prices. But a lot of people have been very disappointed. And this, you know, they work with the central banks because a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. So these are the tools that they've used to suppress the price of gold and silver, even when it makes no sense at all. Personally, I think we should all be taking advantage of that. So I wanted to just specifically look at gold's role in Basel III because it moved up to a tier one or virtually risk-free asset. Well, this is risk-free and it holds no counterparty risk. I hold it, I own it outright, and it's invisible. And I came across, I wish I'd come across it a little bit sooner, but that's okay. A great piece, again, from the biz on gold's role in the central bank's um, reserves, and we're gonna come to that later. But it has physical gold, has been given a zero risk rate weight because gold bullion held at the bank or held in another bank on an allocated basis. In other words, if another bank is holding this, my name is on that, that coin. So they cannot trade that coin, unlike the unallocated. To the extent the gold bullion assets are backed by gold bullion liabilities. Okay, so I hold it, I own it. Zero, that means you don't have to have any reserves. It's treated like cash, okay? Actually, cash owned and held at the bank or in transit. Also, zero risk waiting. Additionally, collateral must be pledged. So this is a big change. Must be pledged for the life of the loan. So if, if I'm using this as collateral against a loan, well, that has to remain there until I've paid the loan off. Mm, can't do fractional reserve uh, lending if you have to back it and keep that physical there. So, and it has to be marked to the market. So it has to be revalued every six months. This is really a danger for these bullion banks. And also, which I love, we've talked about, if you've, been, if you've been watching me for a while, we've talked in the past about maturity mismatches and they would no longer be allowed. So this is like an instantaneous thing, but uh, a spot contract can go out months. That's a mismatch, right? So short-term assets funding long-term debts? No, not anymore. Gold, because it runs physical gold, because it runs no counterparty risk, is eligible for collateral. But it requires a provable one-to-one -one ratio. You have the asset, you have the liability. It actually exists. You cannot do fractional reserve banking with this. This is huge and not what they'd want at all. Now, of course, the Bank of England supports this, is reinforced by it, and they say that these are just proposals to implement the Basel III standards on counterparty credit risk. It is really this whole Basel piece 
is about a revised framework for capital requirements. In other words, how much do these banks have to hold in reserve? Because right now it's, it's pretty low, especially on the unallocated accounts that they get to leverage many times over. And this is where the date comes from as well. But it is the review that's expected to be completed by the end of this month. Okay, now, and it's a proposed implementation. So there's not a guarantee that this is going to actually go through. Let's see. I mean, I just don't think they're ready yet. I'm not saying that this is, you know, nothing because it is definitely something. But I think that this would be a lot more valuable to the powers that be when they're ready to reset, do an overnight revaluation of the currency because they always do it, the fiat currency against gold. But if they did this now, would this kill the paper gold market? Well, uh, yeah, because it's going to eliminate the ability to suppress the real true price of both gold and silver. And the LBMA is warning the Bank of England, I mean, this would really actually, if they did, it isn't just the gold and silver market that would be, impl that would be impacted, it would be all markets. And really that's, that's why I say that you know, I, th I think we have a little bit more time than this, but we'll see because it's on the docket, you know, or at least it's proposed, so it could happen. The net stable funding ratio provision of Basel III regulations would require the London Bullion Banks to hold funds offsetting 85% oh, misspelling, sorry, percent of the value of the unallocated gold they hold for customers, which is most of it. Most of it is unallocated so that they can leverage it. It's just like when you make a deposit and you have a margin account, you're letting those banks use your equity for their benefit. This is the same thing. It's a big problem. So what are they going to do about it? I don't know. They sent in a letter and this is the executive summary of it. So again, I'm going to encourage you to go to the blog, pull those links and follow them. It's very interesting reading. Current le legislation prescribes a punitive liquidity treatment for gold and other precious metals. And we consider that current proposals under the NSFR fail to take into account the damaging effect that the rules will have on the precious metals clearing and settlement system, the derivatives. The der I've been saying this forever. You know, we had a derivative implosion that almost took down the system with long-term capital management in 98. We had another derivative implosion that almost took down the entire global system in 2008. Well, neither one of that has been repaired. It's just been papered over. And there are far, far, far more derivatives in the system today, though they're hidden than they ever have been. It will be, I, I'm certain. I mean, I can't obviously guarantee anything, but personally, I am 100% certain that it will be another derivative, the next derivative implosion that will finally make it impossible to revive. And they don't want to anyway. They're ready to go or they're getting ready to go into a new system. But they're talking, LBMA and the World Gold Council is saying that this potentially would undermine the system completely. In other words, poof, it's gone. The proposal fails to take account of the quantitative evidence which suggests that in a liquidity crisis, gold acts as, as an extremely liquid asset. So you remember back to March, and everything goes down at the same time. The stock market was going down March, 2020. The stock market was going down, spot gold was going down, you know, and people go, well, why is spot gold going down? There's a, it's a gold contract, but it's very liquid at this point because of the participants and the bullion banks that we were talking about. So they want those gold contracts available to sell to meet the margin requirements 
when the stock market goes down. I hope that makes sense. I know this whole thing is very convoluted, but it's liquid because it's a huge market. This is liquid. People ask me all the time, well, who's going to buy my gold and who's going to buy my, they don't really ask me too much about the silver, but who's going to buy my gold when it goes up to its fundamental value? Everybody that can, that has the ability to buy it will want to buy it. It is an extremely liquid market because it's used across the entire economic spectrum of the global economy. Now, I wanted to go over the unallocated metal a little bit just to make that more clear because it's the majority of the precious metals held by the LPMCL, that clear, the clearing banks. Okay, um, so any metal that's deposited at these clearing banks, so if you have an account at, say, you know, Fidelity and it's in physical form, okay, and it may be unallocated. You're going to go, well, that's a lot cheaper, so I'm good with that. But you're giving a lot of your rights away. You only have a general entitlement to the metals, and that's what enables them to be able to use by the bullion banks. If you don't hold it, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. I don't care what your perception is. Possession is nine tenths of the law. And hey, I'm thinking that they have more access to the rule writers than you do. So maybe it's 10 tenths. And so any of that gold that's held there, the unallocated gold is subject to that 85% reserve, reserve requirement. Why? because of all the counterparty risk that it runs, including to you who's deposited your metals there. And you don't even know it. You think they're yours? Yeah, not really. That's only your perception. So what does the LBMA and the World Gold Council tell us about um, how that 85% charge would impact everything. Well, it would undermine clearing and settlement. These are contracts, these are not physical. It would significantly increase costs for the bullion banks to the point that some would be forced to exit, they'd go out of business, and risk of collapsing completely. Yeah. It would drain liquidity out of the system because, A, storing unallocated gold would no longer be profitable. And we've got to make sure, we've got to make sure at all costs that these banks are profitable. This would prevent the clearing banks from holding unallocated metal and drain essential liquidity to the gold derivative market. Right? Couldn't be doing the fractional reserve system anymore. These unallocated balances are the only material source of liquidity in the clearing and transaction financing system and their ability to just use the same collateral over and over and over again. Is that your collateral that you're using? Because it's not mine. I hold mine. It would dramatically increase financing costs. Yeah, because they'd have to come up with that 85%. But it would increase the cost of short-term precious metals financing transactions. Okay, now this is where it's about the children, right? Forget us, even though we're making lots of money about it. Oh, we don't care about us. It's about the children. So it would impact miners, the industrial use, and consumer goods. Yeah, yeah, it would. And further, it would curtail central bank operations. Fewer LPMCL clearing banks may curtail central bank deposit, lending, and swaps in precious metals. Let's see, how do they manipulate the price? Oh, lending, swaps, Derivatives, voila. This provides important liquidity to the market, just like all of this QE and this money for free 
for the banks is providing really important liquidity to the markets. Gee, markets are, are near all time highs. I wonder why. Oh, oh, yeah, because it's all a club and you and I are not in that club, but we can act like we're in that club. So what we have here, what is being admitted is that central banks use paper gold, but what do we also know? They hold the physical. So in this recent report, again from the biz, talking about central bank gold holdings, interestingly enough, because I had not seen this graph before, but central banks started accumulating gold, not in 2010, that was the net accumulation, which I'm gonna show you in a second, but they actually started accumulating gold. They were net sellers here to push the price down and get you away from it, but they started accumulating in 2005. Two years, hmm, two years between the before the financial crisis. Hmm, interesting. And what else happened in 2000? Oh yeah, that was also 2005 was also the year that they moved derivative holders up to the front of the line in bankruptcy proceedings. Hmm. Interesting, that was an interesting year. But here are central bank gold purchases going back to 1971 when we went on this fiat money system. And you can see how they were mostly net sellers until they became net buyers. So that's all of the central banks. So you can see this uptick here. You can actually also see it here. See that uptick there? And then of course, where we're having a little dip here in 2020 is because there were uh, several central banks that used their gold as savings to help get them through the coronavirus pandemic economic crisis, right? That's, that's what gold is. Gold is a savings mechanism and a true flight to safety. But here we can see cumulative, the volume of gold that central banks are holding, not just what they're buying annually, but how much that has gone up. So why do they do that? Well, the, these are the conclusions from the central bankers, central bank, the smartest guys in the room about money since they create it and destroy its value. First, gold is free of default risk, runs no counterparty risk, but this is even a better quote. Gold bullion or any, any physical gold is the only case of a financial asset with no counterparty risk. The only one, the only one. Shall I say that one more time? The only one. Everything else is counterparty risk. And any contract is only good as a counterparty to that contract from the Bank for International Settlements. They also say gold kept at home is not subject to political manipulation. They can manipulate the price and you can, you can buy into that, you can believe it. How many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? But here they are telling you gold kept at home is not subject to political manipulation. This is huge. This is huge. This is them admitting the truth. Gold has been empirically proven to serve as an inflation hedge. And what are the global said? What have they been calling for? More, more, more inflation, but it's transitory. Not, it's not transitory. It has been happening since the day you were born. It has been happening to you since the day you were born. 
And every single time a central bank comes out and says, we need more inflation, but don't worry about it. We had a 2% target that we couldn't meet in 10, 11 years. We're going to go to an average. And at that time I said, they're getting ready to justify it. That's what they're doing. And now it's transitory. I don't think so. Do you think it's transitory? Do you think prices are going to go back down? They will in some things that have exploded. And they will in the stock market. That's transitory. And the bond market. That's transitory. I don't know when, but that's transitory. And it is most widely recognized feature is its potential value in highly adverse scenarios. Why do central banks hold gold? Voila. And this is why I hold it and why you should hold it too. I, I really do want to say that I don't think they're ready to crash the system this week or this month rather, but it's possible. I, I did not think that in 2008 they would allow my alma mater Lehman to go out and they did. So I can't guarantee that they won't do this, but I really will see. We'll see. It's going to be a very interesting month. It's been an extraordinarily interesting year. And um, we'll just keep riding this and paying attention and see where we go. But this week, I was on Rice TV with Chris Rice and Pimpy, and it was really fun. The links are below. Next week, I'm going to be on with Daniela Camboni over at Stansbury Research, and we'll update you when that comes out. And we had a great interview the last time. I really enjoyed it. She's such a smart woman. And so I'm really looking forward to it. And then, of course, I will be traveling to the Rebel Capitalist Live in Miami, hosted by my good friend George Gammon. It is sold out. But if you got the tickets, I will see you there. I'm really, really excited about this. Um, you know, and he's got another one that'll come up in January. So if you missed this one, we'll let you know about that one or whenever it is. I don't know the dates yet. But um, he's invited me to that one already, and I'm planning on being there too. For all of the behind the scenes, you know, Edgar is going, Jacqueline's going, Megan, Megan's going. So we're all going to be there. And um, Edgar's going to be doing some behind-the-scenes footage of that. So just stay tuned to Instagram at Lynette Zhang or Twitter at ITM Trading underscore Zhang. And if you like this, please, please, please give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. We do read them. And turn on, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Turn on that notification bell. We'll let you know when we go live because you know that that's my personal preference is to do all of these live. But make sure that you share this one. Share it, share it, share it because sooner or later, everything that we've talked about all along will become apparent. And it's becoming more apparent to people now. And that's why you need a plan, which is what we do here at ITM Trading with the Wealth Shield. Now the foundation is gold and silver, but you also need food, water, energy, security, community, and shelter in order to sustain your standard of living. And we're going to be doing more things. I mean, we've got some things that we've been working on for a while. And, and everything is about really helping you be as prepared so that you can be as independent and self-sufficient to go through this whole reset. And I, and I know that when I say the term reset, people are thinking about a big overnight event. And that's really the big revaluation, which... I don't know. Historically, they'll revalue a currency three times because it takes that many times for people to lose all confidence, typically. But inflation constantly resets the value, your purchasing power value, 
constantly. I mean, it's it's baked into the fiat money system. They knew this, and they knew that the nominal confusion would hide this. But it's about wealth transfer. It's about invisible taxation and physical gold and silver in your possession is free of default risk and it's the only case of a financial asset with no counterparty liability. It fights inflation. It is seen as a, an inflation hedge. It is, if kept at home, it is not subject to political manipulation and its most widely recognized feature is its potential value in highly adverse scenarios we are in a highly adverse scenario. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.